to get the latest in the world of sport. Aaron Akarajala joins us in the studio. Hello, Aaron. Yes, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you doing this afternoon? Good afternoon. Uh, let's get it started here in Nigeria. Rather, rather on a sad, sad note or probably a worrying note, mm. if I were to be very, very specific. Um, the Nigeria Under-17 national team uh, preparing to play the African Under-17 Nations Cup qualifier. Okay. And they were preparing for that game. And usually, before tournaments, uh, before um, getting into qualifiers for tournaments like this, they always do an MRI scan, talking about the magnetic resonance imaging. And usually that is to help ascertain, because the bone density helps ascertain the age. And they usually, they usually put that into context to determine those who probably inflate their ages or what they call football age. Interesting. And yes. <laughs> and unfortunately, 60 players, were, 60 players took the test mm -hmm. and 40 of them failed the test. Meaning, the meaning they're older than they are saying they are. Uh, now, it's, now, that's a tricky line to actually walk because some, technically, that's what it means. Okay. But some always claim that some, some people mature or, uh, more than, faster course. than others. Of course. And some people's bone density is more formed than others. Of course. So, but that still remains the gold standard in testing whether someone is between a particular age bracket or not. And, and I guess you could say, I mean, what are the chances that 40 out of 60 will match up? Who would be abnormally... So, I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying not to be controversial with this. <laughs> but clearly, the, the fact that they failed it means that they cannot be chosen again. Oh, what what really? does this mean for Fatayamo's team and now, the, the qualifiers? Uh, it, it has thrown the man into a tailspin right now. Because in those 20... Mm -hmm. 15 of them were, were literally fringe players. Only three are first team starters. Wow. Two of those 20, two of those 20 mm -hmm. that I'm making up the five now, are just, are just substitutes that he was looking at, are probably thinking of integrating to the team. The rest of them, he didn't even have any hope of, for them. So right now, he would have to make do with that or begin scouting for players, mm -hmm. and he has just three weeks to be able to do that. Wow. So it's really, really tough for the man right now. He's experienced, I must say that, talking about ex Julius Bega coach, and he knows, he knows youth football, but getting enough players, getting quality players, in, in this time weeks. frame, in three uh, what, weeks. What informed their decision to do the testing at this time? They all, no, before you go for the tournament, it's always it's happens. You, you, yeah, you must do the test. But this I, is not the first, and this will not be the last. I have to ask, how did this happen? Because from what I'm gathering, these are not new players. Some of them came from the under-16, yeah, but the they don't play tournaments. So yeah, but some of, those tournaments, some of those tournaments don't require you doing an MRI test. Okay. So that is where the problem is. I see. So, um, because um, this is... When you want to do anything regards to calf and fever, fever would always require results from the MRI. So, and they actually do it themselves. So, it has put them in a very, very precarious situation. Precarious situation. Yeah. And it's really tough. I hope they can, because Nigeria has been exceptionally successful. But this might be an opportunity to really go scouting for grassroots talent. Time is of the essence. Now, the point is, Nigeria has always shown, as a matter of fact, Nigeria is the most successful team at the under-17 level globally. We've won it a record five times, talking about the FIFA under-17 World Cup. So you look at all that, there's a lot of pressure for Nigeria. Anytime Nigeria is going to the World Cup, every, everyone tips Nigeria to be the favorites to win the World Cup. Mm -hmm. We've brought in the likes of Victor Ekpeba, Celeste Babayaru, Victor Simmons of recent, Kelechi Yanacho. The list is endless. And some boys were hoping to be the next Maybe Celeste yeah. and Victor Ekpeba. So what, what hopes for these people who... They would have to, they would have to the move up the kid. That's what it means. Okay, they can go up to the next yes, tier. Yes, they can. But now it gets, it gets tougher because if you are playing at the under-17 level, that means you are 16 and below. Okay. Mm -hmm. That means now if you are, if they are being, if you are being bumped to the under-20, certainly you'll be playing with people older than you are. You must be exceptional to be able to thrive. So rather unfortunate for mm. you. Yeah, yeah. And in the meantime, um, let's actually bring this because an interview was actually conducted. Okay. Um, yesterday, they did the FIFA Best Award where coaches, players, fans yeah. also were all distinguished for the year and reviewed the 2019-2020 season. And Jürgen Klopp has been speaking. I uh, Sometimes some people try to throw in humility into the mix and sometimes I just, it rubs me off the wrong way. <laughs> he's, been he's been voted the best coach mm -hmm. in football for the second year running. 
and he claims he's not the best. Let's get to listen to him. What he has to say. <laughs> now I'm happy about it. To be honest, it's a special, it's a special thing for my coaches and me. I saw them now already. They were, they are buzzing. Um, and actually, if you would have asked me, um, are you the world's best coach? I would have said no. If you would have asked me, do you have the world's best coaches around you? I would have said yes. So um, we take the award like this. It's uh, it's all good. There are more important things in the world, but um, it's a nice one. Actually, Aaron, all I can say is it takes one to know one. Clearly, you're not in the humble category, so you wouldn't identify him. The point is, if, the point is, if, the if you're pairs <laughs> and if journalists, some of those people that vote, that are actually eligible to vote for this award, mm -hmm. say you're the best. He sounded sincere. That, well, come I'm on, saying. come you're on. The one between the lines. Ah, no, no, no. And really, Aaron, yes. humility kills no one. Exactly. You haven't killed anyone. Okay. No, there's nothing wrong with it. Okay. Even saying okay. humility. All right. How about you, just to refresh some, um, some minds? Of course, the likes of Robert Lewandowski mm -hmm. was actually voted the best male player all right, in that particular category. Lucy Bronze also took away the gong for the best women player. She's actually dedicated this to the to the ex Liverpool coach who died some few days oh, ago, yes. talking about mm. Jenna Hooli. So, uh, congratulations to her. She's the first um, UK citizen or the first Brit to actually win this award. So, oh, it's a big deal. It's a big deal for mm. her and for the country. And so, but well, seeing how things actually play out in terms of this, of course, there were talks about Cristiano Ronaldo. Time will not permit us to go into the Ronaldo line of Messi mm. um, controversies and the subplots in that particular. Um, award. But before we go for the brevity of time, uh, I was thinking of talking about some of the fixtures for this weekend. But let's quickly talk about Lewis Hamilton. Okay. Lewis Hamilton, we know. I'm going to ask you in all of this, I yeah. was, what, there was no Nigerian? No. None? No. Okay. No, no we, don't have, we don't have Nigerians playing at the, or, 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 or probably shooting, <laughs> shooting at the elite level mm. at the super yet. level of football yet. yet. Mm. I like the word yet mm. because it has to put it into context. We are hoping so. At some point, we'll see people like maybe a Victor Seaman who is who seems to be a shining light right now rise to the occasion. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of difficult. When it gets to that level, we're seeing it's almost being it's almost like saying the boys are being separated from the men. Okay. Really? And that's how it's always been. And we've seen Africans, because although sometimes Africans have been robbed, although we've even seen the likes of John upon where the Liberian president, all right, dominate Europe, but it's been a while. We need to get those guys there. We saw Kano Wanko, JJ Okocha, some mm. of these guys actually dominated Europe. But these days, it's difficult. And that is why things like what we're talking about with the under-17 mm -hmm. goes a long way, because that is where it actually starts from. Uh, but before we go, Lewis Hamilton. Very um, briefly. Yes, briefly, yes. We know him, of course, he won seven titles. And this is this was the tweet that Mercedes put out there because he's going to be signing a new contract. What, £40 million. Wow. All right. And, I, and that, the word says that, of course, he plans to stay there. He has never talked about leaving. He said, I plan to be here next year. I want to be here next year. I think we as a team have more to do together and more to achieve. So we're expecting this to actually be put, I mean, pen to be put to paper very soon. And he will sign a 40-year, I mean, a £40 million pound contract with the hope of winning another title, which will be a record title. He's already equaled the record of Michael Schumacher, Excellent. the great in Formula One, mm. and he can take it a step further. With the Mercedes constructors, they are unstoppable. Excellent. Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton are uh, match, yeah. match made in heaven. Match made in heaven. I don't know about you guys, but if I get 40 million pounds, I would not be going anywhere. I'll be here <laughs> next year. No, but he, for him, for him, it's more about, it's, a no it's more about the machine that can Help yes, he, that, that, that can hit his performance. He he's one of the, the best drivers in the circuit, yes. and he knows how to do his thing. And he knows he's the best. He's yes, and he knows it. Yes, <laughs> yes, he knows he's the best. He doesn't shy away from it. Yes. And there are clamors that he should be knighted in the UK. My, my. Yes, he's been that phenomenal. I don't think it will happen. Some are saying that he should at least okay. retire before they start yeah. thinking of knighting him at the moment. <laughs> and he's not thinking of retiring probably for the next two, three years. Fantastic. Uh -huh. I have 40 million pounds to think about yeah. on the weekend. <laughs> Thank you so much, Aaron Akredola. Ekene? Yes, it looks like we're retiring. <laughs> uh, you've been watching Arise Newsday with me, Ekene. And I, Adesu. Please keep it on the Arise News channel from the entire teams in Lagos, Abuja, London, New York, Washington, Johannesburg, Nairobi. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>